Amen. Take your Bibles, if you would, tonight. Uh, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 in your Bibles. We'll start in verse 18 and read down to verse 21. Exodus chapter 20, starting in verse 18 and reading down through verse 21. When you find that, go ahead and stand for reading God's Word. We'll start in Exodus uh, 20, verse 18, and uh, read down through verse 21. And this is what it says. It says, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood uh, afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou unto, uh, uh, with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be for your faces, that ye sin not. So verse 20 is the one that we're going to really look at tonight. And again it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. Not. And so tonight what I'm preach about is, is living proof and being proved. And so let's pray. Father, we're grateful, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to be strengthened. And Lord, help us. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to gather tonight. And uh, we don't take it for granted when we see the nation coming apart like it is around us in the sense of what's going on, Lord. Uh, we never take it for granted, Lord, that we have the freedom to come and to worship you because Lord it's precious and it might be something that is limited in the near future and so Lord help us Lord uh, to understand uh, our freedoms and help us Lord to understand that in a sense we're to be a living proof uh, for you and so Lord help us to be strengthened and encouraged we pray all this in Jesus name amen you may be seated now our text tonight seems to indicate that a, a, bear, a big share of trials uh, we encounter could be uh, contributed uh, to God. Have you ever thought about that? The things that we go through, um, I'm not saying many times that, uh, and, and I don't always believe this, that everything I go through, that God is putting me through that. But I think God has an ability to use circumstances in your life uh, uh, to your advantage. Even things that uh, he might not intend for you to go through. Uh, of course, he's the master of everything. He's in control of everything. But we are in a sinful world and we do face things that we're going to face because of our our failings or, or those around us' failings or this world, uh, with sin in this world, uh, its failings. And uh, so being in a sinful world, many times we're going to experience things uh, and go through trials and tribulations. Uh, that many times what God will do is use those uh, to his advantage or use those uh, to grow you spiritually or to prove you even. Again, look at verse 20. It says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and uh, in that his fear may be before your faces, uh, that ye sin not. And so proving in this verse, I believe, it means uh, to, try, uh, to try in order to ascertain uh, some unknown quality or truth by experiment, uh, test, or standard. That's like a, uh, a dictionary type uh, uh, um, definition right there. And there are many times in Scripture, throughout Scripture, uh, that you'll see, uh, see God, is, God will many times test, prove, even push people uh, to prove them. And here's what's interesting. Uh, God, when proving people, is not trying to see for himself where our weaknesses are. He already knows. Remember how I always say uh, when with uh, Adam and Eve, and when Adam and Eve hid themselves from God, and God, God cries out to them and uh, asks where they're at. I've always said, God's not doing that because he doesn't know where they're at. I mean, he's the creator of the universe. He created them. He knows everything. He knows from beginning to the end. So, of course, he knew what bush they were hiding behind. But what he was doing was calling for them to bring them to a point of realizing what they were doing. He was, he was uh, calling for them and, and asking where they were so that they'll recognize uh, what, they're, what they were doing and where they were hiding. And so, so God proves his people in order to show them uh, their weaknesses. Uh, that's the purpose, the purpose we see in verse 20. And, and what's the purpose of him doing that? Well, in verse 20, again, it says that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. 
And, and I said this morning in, in my preaching, I said, you'll come to many whys in the road. And in many, many places where you have to decide which direction you go. And, and are you going to go towards the world or toward God? And listen to what Job said. Job said in, in Job 23, 10, he said, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Now, I want to look at a few proofs tonight, or a few tests uh, tonight that we can look at, that show how he tests his people. Uh, even today, well, this can apply to us even today. And uh, so turn to, I want you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. And I'm going to turn to a different place. I'm going to read something for you. And uh, you'll recognize it. It's in Deuteronomy. And, uh, but you turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and uh, verse 1. Stay right there for a minute. And uh, let me read this to you. Deuteronomy chapter 13. And uh, in verse 1, this is what it says. It says, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Uh, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you. To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So you see what was going on here? Let me read it again. It says, if, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign of a, or a wonder, and a sign of wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, or let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. So isn't that amazing that there's times to where you're going to be challenged by people who come uh, that, that totally turn against God, and, and God can look at that as a time to prove you. Now, now David, read to me 1 Timothy. I don't feel like turning there. Uh, turn, uh, read to me 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. What's it say there? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine. Yeah, and that's the same kind of thing that was going on uh, back here in the Old Testament. And, and God was warning them of that. And God said, that's going to be times uh, where you're going, to be, uh, you're going to be proved. And so, so can I say this again? The purpose many times is, is why he's proving you is because it, that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. And so we look at that, and, and what we see here is what... what what uh, uh, David just read about, uh, I, I think of the story of, of a shepherd and how trained sheep, a shepherd when he, when he, when he guides his sheep, they will not respond, respond to the voice of a stranger. There's an example of it in John chapter 10. And it's talking about, uh, talking about Christ and how he says that my sheep, they hear my voice and they will follow me. And, and what's amazing is those sheep, after they get used to that voice and learn of that voice, they don't follow other voices. There's an example, and I can't remember exactly where it was, but a man telling, and I think I heard it on Christian radio or something like that. And uh, it was an interesting, uh, an interesting illustration that the guy gave, that he said, here I am, I go to the Bible lands. And he said, I was very interested in, a, in, in shepherds. And he said, so I was able to go out into uh, the, the regions of, of the shepherd areas. And he said, I encountered this shepherd who was leading a flock. And he said, the guy kind of uh, was uh, friendly to me and let me ask him questions. And he said, as his sheep were there drinking, he had led them to a brook or whatever it was, wherever they watered their sheep. As they're drinking, he's standing there talking to me. And he, he, he's, uh, I forget how it all came about, but the guy said, uh, I'm amazed how them sheep listen to your voice, and they follow you. And he said, could you teach me to do that? And he said, he just smiled, and he said, they would never listen to you. And he said, well, not even if I say it exactly like you. And he goes, no, because they know my voice. And so he said, well, could you, could you let me try that? 
And he said, sir. So he taught him, uh, taught the, the command, exactly the command that, uh, that the sheep would need to hear to lift their head or to respond and to, uh, to start following. And he said, here's what you need to say. And so he did it a couple times. He, you know, the guy trying to get the sheep to listen to him, the stranger, sheep wouldn't even lift their head. They just went about their business. And, he, and the guy said, now, now watch this. And he said, I said it just like the guy said. But he said, when, when the guy said what sounded like the exact same thing I said, he said, all the sheep lifted their head and looked at it. And, and so they heard his voice. They knew his voice. And so it's amazing, just like we're talking about here. Uh, again, uh, it says there, uh, in that last verse, it says, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. So talk about uh, being living proof. And so what I'm getting at is, is he seems to even test us by, by the things that we go through. He proves us by what we'll listen to. Just as I said this morning, I said there's going to be times where, uh, where you're, you're following God and you come up to this, uh, this, uh, this why in the road and you have to make a choice whether to follow God or follow the world. You see. And, and so there's going to be times where God tests us with those events that happen in our life. Here's a second one. Turn to uh, Exodus chapter 16. There's another way that he proves us and that we are living proof for him. Turn to Exodus chapter 16. Just back a little bit. Or you're in Timothy, actually, so you've got to go back quite a ways. But Exodus chapter 16. And uh, look at verse 14. So Exodus chapter 16, here's another way he tests us or proves us. Exodus chapter 16, in verse 14 it says, And when the, when the dew that lay was gone, I believe I'm in the right place. And when the dew uh, that lay was gone, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as a uh, hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is man, and they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you uh, to eat. And it says, This is the thing that the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and Omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take every man uh, for them which are in his tents. And, and what he was doing here, and I know we don't experience this, but there was a definite test going on here. And what he, wanted to, what he wanted to do is he wanted to test Israel to see if they would be obedient to him. He was, he was providing for their needs. And, and what he was doing, his goal was to, uh, to, to show us, well, will they obey him? And really, uh, it's our same challenge. I mean, there's many things where, where we get, I, I look at our situation right now, Christine and I. And we're probably as lean, uh, well, not speaking size-wise for me. But we're probably as lean as we've ever been as far as when it comes to our living. And, and every penny that we make right now has a specific place to go. I mean, we're even, we're even, we're even wringing out the pennies, trying to get more out of them because of the house situation, all that's going on. And so, so, so it's almost like we're going through a test right now. To see, and God seems to be seeing if we'll trust Him and obey Him. Amen. And, and it's the same kind of thing here. That we read that, and I know it's a simple little illustration uh, about the man. But what He was doing is He was testing them. He's providing for them, but He's going to keep them lean and mean. They're going to have to trust Him. And what He's using it for uh, is... is He's seeing what they will do. Will, will they obey him? And his goal is to show us, as we read this, to the extent which they will follow and which we will follow. Do you trust him? You see. And so he tests us that way. You know, he, he tests us by what we do with what he puts before us. Amen. And, and here his goal for Israel 
was to get them to trust him daily. And if they gathered, they would, uh, and, and the thing about it is, if they overabundantly gathered, they would tend to forget him. They'd get lost in the, in, how would you say it? They'd get lost in, in the overabundance, so to speak. We see that all the time today. I mean, you see people, I've seen people come here and, uh, you know, they're, they're down to their last pennies and all that kind of thing. They get here and they start serving the Lord. They get a job and things start going, in their, going good in their life. And I've said this many times. The first thing that you'll see them doing when things start to get good, they start to turn away from God. They start to put God in the co-pilot seat and themselves in the pilot seat. <clears throat> I said that's always, I've always disagreed with that bumper sticker that says God is my co-pilot. And I've always said, you know, that sticker should say, God is my, my pilot and I'm the co-pilot. I'm the one coming along for the ride. Amen. Uh, and, and, but what happens with is people, just like here, he wants to keep them. I mean, it, it sounds like God's a tyrant, but really he's not. I mean, God wants to keep his thumb on us, and he won't let me. He's a micromanager. He won't let me make any of my own decisions. No, it's not that at all. But what it is, is God knows that when, you know, when there's an overabundance, many times you'll turn away from God. And you'll spiral out of control. Amen. And so, so what I'm saying is, many times, the test is, will we follow him? You see. And, and we need to. Amen. And we need him daily. We need his word daily and his guidance daily. And then also, look at, turn to Judges chapter 2. We'll look at another one. He tests us also by the world around us. Judges chapter 2. And uh, look what it says. Judges chapter 2. And uh, uh, verse 21. Judges chapter 2. And uh, verse 21 and 22. Look what it is. It, it is. It's an, it, or it does. It's another example of a test that we can go through. Judges chapter 2, verse 21, it says, I also will not henceforth drive all the way from uh, before them of the nations which Joshua left with uh, when he died. In other words, you know what he's doing? He's allowing them to go into the world. He's putting the world around them. Amen. He says, I will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. And so what you see here is he tests us many times by the world around us. The, the things that we experience, the things that we, when we go into the world, amen. Uh, God put us in the midst of those things um, for a purpose many times. Why would he do that? To prove our loyalty, amen. And, and really he's equipping us. Hey man, you go, you go through the writings of Paul, and Paul says, man, you're in the world, but not to be out there. Right. Is it Paul that says that? Yeah. Or is it John? John says Yeah, John says that. You're to, you're to be in the world, but not of the world. And so, and, and Christ even said, you know, beware, um, you're going to experience tribulation in this world. If you follow me, you're going to have tribulations. Right. But he says, take, you know, be up, uh, yeah. Say it again. Be a good cheer. Yeah, be a good cheer. Amen. And, and so that's one of those times where uh, he's using it to prove our loyalty. Will we stay true to him or, will, or to the world? That's another time. We come to, just like I said this morning, you come to that Y in the road and, and you have a choice. Go to the world or go to God. You know, which will it be? Will we stay true to him or to the world? And, and what's amazing is churches long ago started to indicate their preference. When you start to look at churches nowadays, and the Bible, you know, the Bible is gone in many churches. Right. You know, I told Kevin this morning, I said, we're a little bit different as far as a church. You know, you, it, it's, not, it's not uncommon, and I don't know how much we have of this anymore. I don't even know what kind of influence we have anymore. But it's not uncommon to used to hear that, oh, you're at that church. They're the only ones that think they know anything. Oh, you're at the King James only church. Amen. And, and I told uh, um, 
uh, Jamie that we are, you know, he don't understand it. But I, I just told him, I said, well, we're, we're a little bit different. I said, we're, we're King James only. And he goes, oh, oh. no, he didn't know what the difference is. And they wouldn't coming out of that, you know, that realm because it's been so long. He's never been brought up in a good fundamental church. You know, not, well, I shouldn't say fundamental, a, a biblicist style church, a Bible believing church. Amen. And so, so he tests us by the world around us. And so many have failed the test. Churches uh, have failed the test. The Bible is gone in many churches. I remember, uh, I don't know how many years ago it was, while knocking a, a, a lady's door, uh, she was standing there as so I'm talking to her and inviting her and telling her, you know, that, that we're not just here to invite you to church, we're here to give you a gospel tract. And that tract tells you exactly what the Bible says about going to heaven. And she's kind of looking that tract over, and all of a sudden she goes, oh, you, you're, you're one of those Baptists, you're a Baptist church. And I said to her, kind of with a smile on my face, I said, what does that mean? I said, I said, are you, does that mean you're looking for a Baptist church or you're saying you won't go to one? And she said, what she said is, well, well, what I know about the Baptist church is you guys have rules. <laughs> Amen. But it's not that we have rules, it's that we go by the Bible, you know? And so, and so you don't know how much that says, really, that, that without this Bible, it's a free-for-all. Amen. And, and so it, 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 it's not, I mean, we could get into all kinds of things about how, how you know, it's not a come as you are, but, but you know, we're, we have no problem with that. Come as you are, there's no problem with that, but we're not going to let you wallow as you are. You know what I'm saying? That means come as you are. But at, when you get saved, and, and the Bible says that we become a new creature. And so when you come as you are, you won't stay like you are for very long if you've gotten saved. You won't wallow like in a, you know, in a, a, a pigsty or, or like, you know, yeah. And, and so you understand what I'm saying. And... And, and I also say this, there is not one sin that will prevent entry into this church. Amen. I mean, there's a lot of people that have their pet sins that they say, oh man, if you did that, you could never get saved. I don't believe that. There's not one sin that prevents your entry from coming into this church or getting into the body of Christ. Right. Amen. But persistent sin will prevent you, uh, how should I say it, will prevent your perception of the church. In other words, you might get saved, but you won't stay long. Amen. If you if 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 you don't if you don't allow yourself to be tested and proved by God's word, and and allow it to stoke a good fear of God in you, you won't be around here long. Amen. We've seen a lot of that. We've seen a lot of people get saved, and, but what we also see them is they're not around too long. You see. And then finally, turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 in the New Testament. And we'll conclude with this. 1 Peter chapter 1. And look what it says. First Peter chapter 1 and uh, verse 7. Pretty well known verse. And this is what it says. It says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than a gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's kind of like a test of your faith. That final test that we go through is he tests us in what we believe. Amen. You're going to go through a lot of trials in this world. And there's a lot of things that, that you learn from this Bible that you have to test that. You know, you have to say, okay, am I going to have faith in that and stick by that, or am I going to go by what the world says? Amen. Read that again. It says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than a gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
It's, a, it's the fires of life that test our faith, the things that we go through. And in a sense, he's testing us, you see. And what it seems to happen, what seems to me that happens is the, the greater the heat, the purer, brighter comes out the gold. Amen. I remember, a, um, oh, I shouldn't even tell this because I don't remember it that well. But it was one of the, one of the great preachers, um, it might even have been a president, that he had went to church. Oh, I shouldn't even tell it. He went to church, maybe, maybe some of you have heard this. He went to church, came home, his wife asked him what he thought of the new pastor. And, oh, I shouldn't even try it. Because it was about the, the, the pastor, the young pastor, going through trials of his own to where it makes it more believable. And what had happened was, from the time that he first saw him to the time that the next time he saw him, um, he had a tragedy in his life. Might even have been something like losing a child. And he said, man, what a difference in the preaching. Now, I don't, I don't wish that on anybody. But man, it seems that that trials, great trials in the heart of the fire it is in our lives, the purer, up, the purer the goal comes out. Amen. And so what I'm saying is, is many times the test uh, he tests us in what we believe. Many times they come to the trials of life in this world. Amen. And so, what an opportunity, what a challenge we have. We're, we, in a sense, as we live in this world as Christians, we're on proving grounds every step of the way. Amen. And so, what an opportunity. We're living proof, so to speak. Father, we sure are grateful, Lord. I pray that you help us. And Lord, what a challenge it is for us when we think about, Lord, and I, I no way mean to, to suggest, Lord, that you purposely put us through um, trials.